All right, one of our viewers asked, what is visual movement and why does it matter? Well, let's move into that. Okay, to the first thing, what is visual movement? Well, visual movement, well, let's just, let's do this. What do your eyes do when they look in this area? This is the format, we pretend there's a canvas or something. What do your eyes do? Your eyes are actually moving around this curve. What if I put a little circle right here? Then your eyes move something like this. What if I put a mark right up here? Now we're getting into abstract art. But all art is based on visual movement. Our visual movement is a large part of all painting, whether you realize it or not, painting and sculpture. So your eye is moving like this. It's moving here to here. It goes up there. So what we're doing when we use images on a flat surface is we are actually creating a visual, and a movement of the eye. The eye is moving from one image to the other. And the reason knowing how to use visual movement is important is that it helps to keep unity, helps to give unity to the whole thing. If the visual movement is a conflict, in other words, if there's just too much going on, nothing is emphasized, no way is created, or there's no strategy for allowing the eye to move, then the viewer doesn't know where to look. It feels chaotic and Nine times out of ten, nobody wants to look at it. Well, let's look at why visual movement, or what has happened in visual movement throughout the centuries, but not only that, how you can discover more about it. So I'm going to take away all this. Just have a clean slate here. Now, let's just take a look at some, some uh, paintings. We're, go we're going to go uh, all the way through from beginning with a Renaissance uh, and coming forward. Well, we're not going to do thousands and thousands of pictures, but we're going to do a representation and show you one reason why these artists remain important in our art history is because of the way they use visual movement. Okay, where is the visual movement here? Well, it, nine times out of ten, a viewer who is not trained in art might look and they'll just see a mother and a child. But there's some things going on there. For well, one thing, the mother is looking down at the child and the child is looking off like this. That is a visual movement. Our eyes do this. Now what else is going on there? We have this dark background here. We have light, uh, contrasty areas there that are in the blues and we have a blue shape here. Now our eyes will actually be, be uh, guided by that blue. Our eyes it may land in any place, maybe here, maybe here, maybe here, but you pick, see a little bit of blue right here, a little bit of blue right there. So that is the repetition of color guiding our eyes as they move through this scene. And other things that will happen is what we might call a major visual movement, and that will be the overall movement uh, that will be established by the artist. And you can see that the overall movement the, uh, the way the child's arm is arranged with this uh, light against the dark contrast up here. The overall, there, there is a definite overall movement from this corner to that corner. And there is some kind of a subordinate movement from this corner to that corner because the child is going in this direction. The, the uh, direction of the way the, the mother is formed is moving in that direction. And you're going to see that theme repeated throughout history. In, in many, many, many of our more famous artworks, you're going to see that diagonal movement, the diagonal movement that is going to either feel that it's going from a, one corner to the other, or it's going to be parallel to a movement that goes from one corner to the other. And that's very much related to the golden mean that we discussed in another quick tip. So let's look at some of the other things in history and let's look for that among uh, just some internal visual movements. 
So now this is, of course I didn't call it, this is Leonardo. Um, this is Rubens, of a, a Flemish painter from the 17th century. Now, if you're not looking for visual movement, you might just say, okay, it's a portrait of man, so what? And it's old, nobody wants to see it. Well, those well, artists will look at that and they will see that there is a visual movement that goes in this direction and moves in that direction and that stability is caused by the way that movement is uh, going from one direction to the other is part of what makes it work as a good solid painting. Now you notice in this one the lightest light, brightest light is right in here and then you notice the darkest dark we have two a repetition of dark shapes this one and that one. The eye moves uh, within this because with the, within this area because these are dark. And then we have a middle value of shape that moves around that that keeps these two from being quite so harsh. But look at what else we have here. Again, we have this movement that feels like it's going from corner to corner. And that's an overall movement. Now that comes out of a principle called dynamic symmetry, which I will do some other work with you on, but it's not something we want to go into here. Let's just pay attention. Corner to corner. Uh, and so you see corner to corner here, we feel that movement. And, and the movement that we feel here is parallel to that movement. The movement we feel here is parallel to corner to corner. And then on this side we feel, with the head tilted this way, we feel that alignment of this line uh, from corner to corner on that side. Um, okay, so that's that's uh, just an example. If you, you look at more and more and more of Rubens' works, you're going to see a lot of this going on where you see the movement, the way the whole thing is uh, placed on the, on the canvas and the various things that are going on. There will be a major movement that will be going from corner to corner. On, um, sometimes in both directions. Sometimes it'll be more strongly in one direction or another. Sometimes the movement will be parallel to this feeling of a line that goes corner to corner. So let's take a look at come, coming forward a little bit in history. Everybody's favorite guy, Vincent Van Gogh, or as some like to say, Vincent Van Gogh. Uh, yeah, I know. So we're going to just call him Van Gogh, but it doesn't matter what we call him. Now he knew this. He knew this principle of aligning or creating a major movement that will move from corner to corner on either one in oh in one direction or another. And if you if you will just switch your attention to just the shape and the way this shape is moving, you can see that right here. You can see how this. Uh, all these contrasting colors, placement of those brush strokes, the placement of the colors, you can see that we have a feeling of a movement that goes from this corner here to this corner there. And then we have a kind of a minor movement that goes from that corner there to that corner there. Now there are movements, there are, uh, what we call visual patterns that will take place within these things, but you'll find that many, many of the major paintings uh, uh, from major artists in history are going to have their whole painting arranged in such a way that we have that alignment from corner to corner uh, on, in either direction or some parallel movement that will be also aligned in that direction. So the way they tilt their shapes and their images uh, not necessarily just copying what they saw or see but the way we uh, kind of rearrange or retilt images or major images in a painting in order to make that happen. Okay, let's go just a little bit, come a little bit closer to home here and let's look at another favorite guy of everybody, Claude Monet. And uh, we can see a similar thing happening. Now we know that Monet's major concern, especially as he got older and older and deeper and deeper into Impressionism, his major concern was light. But he knew this principle, and you'll, you can see it at work right here. You see the edge of this light against the edge of that shadow being picked up the blue of that vase. It goes right up here with this shape pointing to this shape, and in this area right here, and then we can see that feeling, the way that this, this perspective angle is tilted right there. We can see that feeling of the whole thing 
um, is actually arranged around this particular movement. You can see the same thing happening here going in this direction. You can see those things when you start looking for them. Now in this one, uh, something's happening also that we see in, uh, in paintings where we have buildings and streets and things like that. And that is we will see a one point perspective where you can see here this is tilted in this direction and this is tilted in that direction. And that's kind of a secondary visual movement that's within this overall visual plan. Okay, let's come a little bit closer now to home and get more, uh, get into the 20, 20th and the 21st century to Richard Schmidt, one of the uh, famous, uh, one of the major painters today, our contemporary. He stands, as far as a lot of artists are concerned, uh, Richard stands above all the rest of us as far as his work goes. And this particular one, and you can see this also repeated in his work over and over again. Look for it. But you can already now I've pointed it out to you, you can feel that general movement that moves in this direction from uh, created by the value contrast here and also the way this image is pointed. And you can also feel it moving in this direction. So you can see alignments taking place. Now there are other angles too. We might call these the, ma these the magic diagonals or the magic angles that will hold a painting together simply because of the movement that goes from corner to corner on either direction or is parallel to that. But there are other movements too that I can talk about or show you in other quick tips. But these are the major ones. Now why do that? Every painting should have unity. Every painting should be harmonious, be able for uh, uh, the viewer wants to stay there. You don't want to re reject or repel the viewer. So we do these things so the viewer will stay there. For unity, this helps this doing this overall visual movement in the diagonal directions enables a kind of unity. It enables an order. Things, all things feel that they belong. It gives us rhythm. And rhythm is what visual movement is mainly about, so that things aren't just static and staring at you, but they have some sort of interest that keeps you involved. Just like music has a rhythm, painting has a rhythm too. Be sure and view all of our quick tips. And while you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DyingMinds.com where I have full length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.